As a Gentile, have you ever felt like you're supposed to be considered a second-class citizen compared to the Jewish people because they were chosen of God as his people? And did you ever feel like maybe you would never be able to measure up to that and that you read the Bible and you always saw all these promises for the Jewish people and you saw the New Testament where the Lord says he's going to graft in the Gentiles. But I'm here to tell you today that we need to look at something that is so significant to being a Gentile that you'll never look at it the same. And that is that in the biblical history in the Old Testament, there were four women, three of which were in the line of King Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah of Israel, and they were Gentiles. So that would mean that the Messiah, the royal king himself, not only is Jewish from the tribe of Judah, but even his great-grandmother was a Gentile. So that means we are not less than, we are not second-class citizens, like the Talmud would have us to believe, that we are worthless and the ultra-Orthodox like to spit on Gentiles. This is not what God intended at all. And think about this, that there were no Jews going back before 2 Kings 16, believe verse 1 through 6, and that's the first time Jews were mentioned. Adam and Eve were not Jews, and Noah was not a Jew. These people were Gentiles. And we have been a little bit tricked into thinking that we're not good enough to come into God's fold. But nothing could be further from the truth. Because you have the first Jew being Judah and him having children with Tamar. And Tamar was a Gentile. So the line of Judah has Gentile blood in it. Isn't that something? So does that make you less than as a Gentile? No. It brings you into the royal line, actually. And think about the fact that after that, we had Rahab. Rahab was brought into the Jewish fold, but she was a Gentile. And she was an ancestor of the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. And then there was Ruth, who married Boaz, and they had King David's father. King David's line, Ruth, was, and that's uh, Jesus' great-grandmother, she was a Gentile. So God never intended for Gentiles to be treated like garbage or second-class citizens. This is why the Lord came and brought redemption to Jews and Gentiles because he's got Gentiles in his royal lineage. And here we are thinking, um, you know, we have to be in the outer court of the temple because we're not good enough. And we have to read all this stuff about the Gentiles being sort of a bad lot of folks. And... Nothing could be further from the truth. God uses Jews and Gentiles, and he intended to save us all. And that's why he said, in the Messiah, if we are in the Messiah, we are neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male nor female. I should say male nor female. <laughs> For we are all one in Christ Jesus, in the Messiah the King of kings and Lord of lords. Because he's got Gentile blood and he's got Jewish blood. So, like salt and pepper, 
like two loaves on Pentecost, Gentiles, Jews, and coming together and having the Holy Spirit given to us on Pentecost, the beginning of the church, and spreading out to bring the redemption to the Gentiles as well as Jews and the apostles going to the synagogues and creating the churches in the early days of the church. So we should never think again that Gentiles are a pile of rubbish and the Jews are super duper duper special and we are nothing until we're brought to the Messiah because Gentile blood is in that kingly line and we're children of the king and that makes us royal priests and children of God in the Messiah and he brings us all together into one body where the Messiah is the head of the church and you know what that means since I told you that the king has the royal title of head of state that means he's the royal head of state as the king and we are his subjects under him as his body so we support the king and we worship the king and we serve the king and so we keep our lights burning bright with the light of his lamp because we are in him and he is in us and he sent his holy spirit to indwell us so never ever think or be told that as a gentile you are a second class citizen worth being spit on or worth being treated less than because we have been brought together, Jew and Gentile, to the Lord of glory, the God of the universe. And he intended to save us both and through his royal blood line. So this is amazing and it's really a beautiful thing. So think about it. Think about Tamar with Judah being a Gentile and Rahab being a Gentile, an ancestor of Jesus, and Ruth, his great-grandmother, a Gentile. So stop looking at yourself as though, wow, this whole Bible is pretty much about the Jews because at first there were no Jews. It wasn't until Shem, Noah's son, that the Hebrew line came from, the uh, Semites. So you need to know this history and you need to know this for your own self because all my life when I've read the Bible, I have always kind of felt like, well, gee, why did we get left out, you know, and be treated like maybe we're not as good, you know? But that's not at all what God's intending. So I'm just sharing a couple of these things that you need to think about. Thinking about Jesus has Gentile blood and Jewish blood from the tribe of Judah as the king. And he's the last ruling eternal monarch that will ever sit on the throne of Judah. And he doesn't call us servants. He calls us friends. And that's a very special thing. And we are going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the King, Jew or Gentile. There's neither male nor female because God looks at us through a different lens that we are all His. And He blesses all of us with His Spirit and uses males and females to pour out his spirit to reveal his truths. So for now, I hope this blessed you. Like, subscribe, and share. Support my channel, paypal.me 
slash K-K-R-O-C-O-C-O. And mail is Kimberly K. Ballard, B-A-L-L-A-R-D, P.O. Box 246, Niwot, N-I-W-O-T, Colorado, 80544. And read the testimony for the last days of Jesus the Messiah, the King of Kings. In the Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, the Messiah, King of Israel, at olivepresspublisher.com, Harvard University Library, through a Judaica endowment, an act of God. So this shows how God has made us all one new man, and we're all coming together to worship the Lord. Doesn't matter anything about you being a Jew or Gentile, or male or female, this is our creator, and we're going to worship him forever. But we have to give our hearts to him and believe in his testimony of his lifeblood that gives us eternal life, that we can return to the Garden of Eden-like state and dwell in his presence as it was in the beginning. God tells the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. So we're going back to Eden and he's coming soon to take us there. Hallelujah. I'll see you later. I hope this blessed you today.